well it reads uh, no.js with windows and windows azure so uh, what does that bring on to the table per se so uh, the first things first let's couple of things. Uh, basically, uh, I'd like to understand how much, rather I would make, it's not a guess, it's much, much more than a guess. I'm sure most of you, all of you would know what is Node.js, right? That you'll know it much more than I do. Uh, so, uh, really the session is to bring to focus that uh, Node.js is available on Windows. All of you know that? Yes. And uh, it's also available on Windows Azure. So, uh, setting context, I'd like to understand, uh, you all are familiar with Windows Azure platform? Not really. And uh, about the Node, I'm sure, yes. yes. So, uh, you tell me, what is your motivation for coming to this session? What do you want to understand? You want to understand what are the, how do you install it? What are the APIs available? How do you work with Node? Or what really do you want to? <laughs> Is it easy to what uh, VM image would you have? Depends on Still, you anybody already work with Node on Windows? Yeah. Okay. Hello. When it was under development, I still don't know if it's how stable it is right now. Is it completely stable now? Or does all APIs work fine? So, uh, so let's start really. Uh, just a breather to give context as to Node. For, for example, a Windows developer, .NET developer, they might find it very weird. Why do we even need integration? What does Node bring on the table? I'm not going to go through this. You all probably know it. You know the programming right? uh, So, uh, inherently, after the V8 runtime, your app will use multiple modules which will install using the NPM package manager. And uh, if you make use of those, you can write your own modules and you set your roots or you can use other things like Express, etc. So Node is pretty much excellent for uh, polling kind of operations, for uh, web application development per se. Uh, well, uh, not so for CRUD operations, okay types, because really it's driven by events, so you know all of that. Uh, definitely not very good for highly uh, grid computing, sort of, you know, compute intensive for computational scale. So, I'm sure you know that as well. So, let's get all of what we hear to look out for, right? So, uh, Node.js on Windows uh, came out in beta a couple of months back and uh, kind of got stabilized. So, if you go to Node.js.org, you have a download section, and you probably seen this familiar. You have a download for Windows. So, uh, when you go ahead and click the Windows download, it's going to uh, install a couple of components. It first installs the node.exe for your Windows optimized. It also installs a handler for IIS called the IIS node. It's a native module which helps uh, you to leverage the capabilities of IIS as we shall see as well. So uh, I'm not going to run this because it's already got that installed. I just want to let you guys know that you can do that. And uh, also, it installs the NPM, that is the pack node package manager for you to go ahead and download the other modules that you want. Uh, yes, it, uh, it's compatible for 7.0, 7.5. Uh, no, it's it is from seven onwards. So, uh, uh, in fact, if you go ahead and install uh, the through the portal, if you go ahead and install the node.exe and your IS node, you can probably go ahead and you can. Uh, in fact, when you install that, you will also probably get a sample thing which you can go ahead and take a look at. That's something what I have here. I just want to highlight this before we go on. So it will go and install pretty much what you have to do is in your web.config of your file you will set a path to uh, say let's say 
Let me open up a simple web.config here that you see. If you see, it will have a path with the modules as IS node. So you can always set rules and paths so it will be handled by IS node. And uh, how will it uh, actually do that? Uh, your, uh, yeah, so you have the IS and any request that comes to IS will go check with what is the handlers in the modules and it will get routed to the IS node. And what does IS node do? It will go and try to attach itself through and uh, IPC through various node.exe, which means that it kinds of leverages the IS capabilities of, uh, uh, say, load balancing across multiple things. So if you have multi-core processor, how can you leverage all the cores versus a node.exe single-threaded uh, uh, component? So it, you basically will spin off more node.exe's and uh, manage all of that. So all that is taken care by the IAS. So th that is uh, something which is inherent. In fact, uh, the documentations will uh, show all of, uh, will give you these samples. And as, as I said, you have multiple samples. <coughs> right from how you just go and start off with a hello world on the node. For example, uh, you, when I see explore, just has pretty much a load.js file. So um, see if you just see this file, it has nothing fancy. It's, uh, for example, Call the inherent uh, HTTP module creates a server, has a request and response, and on the response says hello world, and just prints probably the version of the node that you have, etc. So, uh, and if you see the web.config file here, you see that it all it has is a handler. That's pretty much. So here we can also go and then now uh, browse this app, and for example, it doesn't have a default uh, setting, so that is why I think I'm clicking the header. So I think it's hello.js. Sorry? So uh, if you see, we are able to access it. So it's wiring up to IS and running it has become like really easy with uh, Node. So that's one thing which I wanted to highlight. And uh, similarly, you can take a look at the other components. How do you set, how can you enable Express? through the node package manager. So let's go on and try to give you some context on Windows Azure and what it's. So quickly what I was trying to show you here was how IS can help developers to enable process management, scaling to multi-codes. For example, auto updates. So what, what really IS does is you make any, once you have it hooked on to your virtual directory in IS, whatever changes that you do will get automatically if it sees that there is any change with the JS file, it's going to take that up and automatically uh, uh, execute that. So it, you don't need to stop, restart, etc. So that is taken care of. And the logs over HTTP can be seen. So uh, how it was developed, uh, the, uh, primarily it says that there are very minimal changes to the node.exe which was done to pull to Windows. So that is to say that you will pretty much all the functionalities that you have currently is available on Linux or you know, it's available on Windows as well. So in fact, if you see all we did is we had our JS file and in our web.config, which is the configuration file uh, for a .NET, uh, for IS to identify where to root the various uh, files, you just put on a handle which says, hey, this is a path, if it is whatever path you can set star or give it a, a regular expression kind of a thing. And in this case, you would call the module IS node. So then it gets routed to that. So now we do the second half of the discussion, which is on Node.js on Windows Azure. So for that, I would want to um, pause a bit and uh, go on to a single portal that you might, in fact, if you want to take back one thing about Windows Azure today, it will be just this windowsazure.com. You can go ahead and get all the information on the Microsoft's Windows Azure platform from this portal. Um, so uh, Windows Azure is supposedly called the cloud operating system. Uh, frankly, it is not an operating system on the cloud. Uh, uh, it is more like operating system services on the cloud, uh, which means that you can do a lot of things. Today, what we'll see is how do you go ahead and uh, deploy your uh, applications, they could be applications hosted on IS, web applications, WCF or services, 
or there could be background applications, backend uh, components, etc. So how can you go and host all of that? So uh, really one part of the Windows Azure is like a hosting provider. So if you don't have your uh, hardware or you don't have the infra, you can use the Windows Azure for But uh, Windows Azure, Azure in its uh, glory is really much, much more than all of this. There's various independent services that it can provide in services in terms of data on the wire. So you can get, uh, you can publish data, you can subscribe data on the wire. If you want to do something like um, authentication authorization through claims based, which is uh, another uh, important happening concept now, claims based authentication across technologies. You want to do all of that, you can, uh, there is something in uh, Windows Azure called the Access Control Service. And uh, there is a virtual machine role. So, for example, you have a VHD, you want to just upload the VHD, you want to use something like the EC2. But uh, truly speaking, you still don't have it persistent. So, uh, there's some fa fancy around it. So, it's not really a virtual machine which is given to you. So, all that is Windows Azure platform. So, uh, talking about the Windows Azure platform, I'd like you to probably take back uh, one basic thing which is like, uh, Frankly, it could be a marketing jargon to say Windows Azure is operating system on the cloud. But uh, what do we really mean or translate it to an operating system? Okay. So an operating system will do some basic tasks like uh, like what? It, foo.exe, it executes foo.exe. The foo.exe can be hosted on IIS, it could be hosted as a batch process, background process, anything. So this component, what we are here to see for Node, is really using that part of the operating system. But why do you even want to do that, right? What is your motivation to move to cloud? Why do you, there is a lot of buzz today and there's a lot of applications being ported, but why have they also invested a lot of time for Node.js on Windows Azure? Obviously because Node is something uh, which is, although it's uh, it was developed like what, MIT, the joint way back in 2009, but uh, still today, it's something where they see a lot of value in it, a lot of applications built on it, etc. But the real essence of uh, Windows Azure is to say that, hey, uh, you have an operating system capability on the cloud, which means you can give your application that it will run and execute. But today, from 10 web uh, servers or 10 instances, if you want to scale up to, say, 100,000, 10,000, how easy it is to do a turnkey scale up today in the current scenario as opposed to on the cloud. So in fact, there are four main companies who are big words in the cloud space like um, Microsoft, I'm representing Microsoft, so I'm saying that. There is uh, Google with uh, Google Apps. There is uh, uh, Amazon, obviously, with the EC2 and um, S3 and other components. There is uh, other players like the VMware, they are all coming up. But then HP is also said to be one who are assimilating a lot of these hardware trying to build their own clouds. So it's like a very thin terminology when you say there's a public cloud, this is a private cloud, hybrid cloud. Any questions? So today when we see, so that motivation, I hope it is clear, right? Why are we even talking about Node.js on Windows Azure? Windows Azure provides certain operating system capabilities. One of the capability is you're able to execute some .exe, whatever be it. What does that uh, uh, cloud op what does that an operating system or your desktop should provide? Definitely should provide certain abstract data types for you to work on. They, those could be uh, your flat files, C drive, symbol tables for, so for your queues for uh, messaging. So it provides all these abstract data types as storage components as a service. So then they just call it a name like storage service. So you can get your blobs. It's called blobs, which binary large objects. You can get uh, your tables, which is more like a 1NF table. It's not like a relational table. It's, you have to manage transaction concurrency. So it just gives you those data structures over the wire, and I call it this. Now, can Node use all of these? Yes. So that's what we are here to see quickly. Is say, hey, Node can use uh, these services that is provided. Node can. You can write an application and deploy it on Node that you can do. So it does these things. Also does certain other things like uh, the basic operating system capabilities of resource management, disaster recovery, scheduling, all that is taken care of by the Ethernet Windows Azure and we are not really bothered or we are not going to discuss about this. Okay. So what if you are unsure, uh, as we got from the poll, all of you are very new to the Windows Azure world. So you could just go click on develop and then you'll see a bunch of technologies which have out of the box support to Windows Azure. Now each component of the Azure at this point might be very unclear to you, but let's just take we want to post application, we want to use some data 
abstract data types which are available as a service. So it's got an HTTP REST endpoint which you can consume. Right? Now once you have an HTTP REST endpoint, you can build wrappers around. So the wrappers have been built obviously for .NET, uh, which for which you can use Visual Studio. There are wrappers which have been built for uh, Ruby on Rails, for uh, PHP drivers, etc. There are wrappers also which have now been built for Node.js. Right? So that's something that you want to know. So when you click on Node.js, it allows you to go and download and install a couple of them. So when I install this, what does it really install? So uh, it will launch something called a web platform installer, which I'm not going to show you fully. But uh, you can just go and download this web platform installer because it's like uh, it will pull out all the other dependencies that you might want to go instead of installing one by one component. You can go ahead and uh, install all of them. So it will go and install your uh, node.exe on your machine. It will install IS node on your machine. It will go and install the NPM package manager on your machine. It will go and install something called the Windows Azure SDK for Node.js. So that's the core SDK for the Node.js which will be used for your coding. It will go and install one more thing which is called the Windows Azure PowerShell commandlets for Node.js. How many of you, any of you familiar with the PowerShell commandlets? So, uh, so you can do this and you can go and just search for node. So it will go and pull out all the components that you might want to install for node. So, so if you see these are the things. So if you add one, multiple ones will be added for dependencies will be found out and things like that. So you can go and add a couple of them and then you can install. So um, that's that. Now uh, to show you the, something concrete, you will probably need to uh, get a quick hang of uh, what does it take to run an application on Windows Azure, right? So let's see if I have some tech on it. So when you see any application on Windows Azure, which is the cloud operating system, say, from the Microsoft, uh, applications can be run either on IIS, I said, or it can be run as separate uh, uh, directly as a uh, as process, etc. So if you can run, if you run on IS, it's called a web role. It's just another terminology. And if it runs outside of IS, it is called work. <coughs> That's all it is. So only two types of roles that run on cloud: the web and the work. Which means on Node.js, you can use it as running as a web role to run it as a web role. Which means in this case, you'll be using the IS node, right? And you'll be using all the features of IS, so you can create a web app or whatever. Or you can directly call node.exe in the worker group. So what, what is? I, what if I have a web role and I don't use uh, the HTTP module at all? I don't listen to any pod. I just put it. So up what does process. your web role look like? So what what does what does it do? Does it look for if there is a HTTP module being used and say it's not being used, or just let it run? The Windows Azure will hook up. So how does Azure work? It will hook up to. HTTP at port 80 as your default page no, handle. That I understand. My question but is. But if there is no HTTP server listening at all, then the, from the Azure world, it will allow the node application to run. But uh, there will not be any. Uh, no, that's on the, the load balancer side you're talking about. Yeah. I'm talking about the, let's say, the hello.js, the application itself. Uh, what's the difference between these two situations? I could. I mean, if I don't want my code to be listening to port 80 or any web, any TCP interface, I could just not use that. You I, could just not use so that, but you would rather use it roles. as a worker role, right? That's so, the point. I mean, I could use it as a way, why, why didn't it have two roles? So that's my question. No, no, so it's precisely why you want to use okay. IIS for deploying your... No, if you want to use IIS, you would use a web role. If you don't want to use IIS, you would use a worker role. That's the only distinction, right? Like. Uh, um, how do I say that? Those are the only two ways that you can probably create uh, an, any uh, service or application. Either you want to deploy it in IS, use IS component. For IS, you have the IS node. Either if you don't want to do it directly, node.exe will be. I understand that. The question was do we really need the two roles for node.js? Do we really need that? Yeah, right. Why? That's the whole part, no? Well, because if you're directly going to call node.exe as a background or a worker process, as I said, you're not using the multi-core, you're not using all no, the... In either case, we will spawn a process. In either case, we will. In either case, you will? And even if you use IS code, you still spawn a process of 
Yeah, yeah, you will. So the highest node will spawn just not one, but multiple. It will okay. load balance across load the balance multiple. All of them. Multiple. Okay. All of that will do. It will also take care of uh, uh, auto updates. So any changes that you do, it will update. Do all the instances spawned by uh, IS share information? Is it possible for them to share information? Let's say if I'm uh, sharing global state hmm. in my application. If I was developing for Linux, I don't have to worry because it's a single threaded application. Now I move to Azure and it spawns five of them. Then the state, there is no common state. How do how is the information shared then? Then I need to bring in some kind of IPC and all. Can you use the state service from IS? The, the so the various uh, the IS node talking to the various node.exe is through the IPC. Okay. Right? So that's that's uh, IS talking to them. Yes. Now, if you are creating an application for cloud, be it not just any cloud for that matter, EC2 is a little different because you get a Linux machine, you are a system admin and administrator. Any platform as a service, uh, your architecture should be stateless. That's, that's another story. I mean, <laughs> some, some person beginning with this uh, might actually write code, it might have state. You can go around telling him that, hey, don't put a state there. One thing you could do is, uh, because those are all configurable. Okay. My question is, can these uh, instances communicate with each other? They share can. information. They can communicate with each other. You could use, I mean, you could use a, I don't know, a distributed cache service, non cache, whatever. No, that, you could do all that. My or, question is, does IS tell you how many instances there are? You tell IS. So you go oh, and configure okay. that you want five instances or one instance. And then what are the cases? Yes. Yeah. But the sharing of session state, etc., from one IS to another IS is not possible. Right? Because if you now say that I want this to be deployed at five instances, that means five virtual machines will be deployed. Each of them will have their separate IS. This is going to be deployed in five. So you can't make a communication or the state is by the knowledge of cloud, it's not talking from one to another. But within an IS, within the various node.exes it's spawning, it's able to maintain this. And it's also guaranteed interpretation state. So uh, whatever session state I'm trying to preserve is uh, always going to be the same node IS instance. Yeah. Okay, so we were saying that there are two roles. We said there is web and worker role. Uh, so let's see. So this is what we said, right? Web role is IIS, which will direct it to the IIS node, which will spawn various uh, node.exes based on me. The worker role, on the other hand, what really happens at the worker role, there is something called the node entry point, which is the entry point for any worker role. And that entry point will be started when the virtual machine is started, it will start the node entry point. And as soon as the node entry point happens, it calls the node.exe. Normal case, what happens if you are writing on .NET or any other, there are other things such as, uh, you can say, when node recycle or create something called node entry point dot run which means that uh, it will execute that code, code as a loop following one another so you can have instead of the while dot one kind of a thing you can have. Here it will just hand over to node dot exe and that's all it will do. You have to handle everything. And when the process ends, does it respawn it or when the process dies? Yeah, no, no, no. It will, so the recycling of the role keeps on happening. So for example, if you've written bad code and it crashes, it will keep respawning it. Right. So let's uh, go and uh, see how do you go and probably quickly develop something on it. First and foremost, uh, you, as I said, WebPI will allow you to install a couple of components. Otherwise, you can go to codeplex.com, which is uh, open source uh, repository for uh, Microsoft uh, components. And this has PowerShell commandlets for Windows Azure. So you can go and search for PowerShell um, commandlets. So basically you can go find that there and then you can install the PowerShell commandlets and once you do that you can go and uh, take a look at node PowerShell. So you have the Windows Azure PowerShell for node.js, launch that. So PowerShell for um, those of you who don't know it's uh, again it's like a very uh, it's like a scripting thing for uh, for Microsoft developers so you can uh, it you have various components add-on which help for example you want to uh, create 
you have a project, you're putting it on production, you want to script the deployments for every Thursday or every Saturday, you want to do such things. Far easier to do using PowerShell scripts. There are, it's got its own modules, commandlets. Commandlets are a bunch of commands which will be segregated as one name, so you can go and execute it if you go do something. Like what? You can do something now that we have this uh, Windows Azure PowerShell commandlet, you can go and say, hey, uh, let's go start a new Windows Azure node.js project. So these commandlets have uh, handles so I can say it. Uh, so let's me go to the correct uh, directory. So let me just go to Here you can go and say, uh, create a new Azure project. So it will say, hey, this is a new Azure project and just give it a name, say JS right? So here what it does is it will create the basic templates for you to so let's go to this uh, location here and uh, see what it has. So go to .js. Hello. So it says that it has built one basic framework. What is it built? It's got some XML files. Forget about the extension. It's got a configuration file and a definition file. So uh, the real the real cloud, which is here, which uh, I don't think is what the actual portal of the cloud is windows.azure.com. So if you go to the windows.azure.com today, you need to sign in with a live ID or a passport ID. Uh, once you sign in, you will get the portal which is like how you see here. And you have these various components which you have access to, like you have a database on the cloud which is called the SQL Azure. You have data sync, you have reporting on the cloud, you have something like you asked about cache, there is a uh, caching service on the cloud, etc. There's also the component that we have bother today which is like hosting your application on the cloud. So here you have uh, the hosting your application. These are the various subscription accounts like you see this is my friend's account, this is my uh, uh, personal account, this is my official account etc. So it's like if you have an account you can make someone a co-admin and they have the exact same rights that you have and you can see multiple things. So uh, which means that uh, for example I can open up one account here and say that this account has multiple projects which have been deployed to it. Right? This means that I have uh, each of these projects, for example, if you say that I would call them as a service in the Windows Azure world because anything that uh, just, it's just again terminology, anything that you can get from the cloud over HTTP or on the wire is supposedly called a service. So I call this as a service, which means that this service, for example, here that you see uh, is called the JS food demo is what the service is called. You see? Now this service has a URL which is by default it's something called cloudapp.net URL. So this has got a URL associated with it and it also has multiple roles that we saw. In this case it has two roles. One is the web role, the other is a worker role. You can have multiple web roles, you can have only worker roles, you can have any combination. Right? So how does the hierarchy work? First is your service just call the service. Within service you go and create roles. So you might have one module to do a backend uh, collection of all the data feeds, one module to say I want to just do the display. The display you can put it as a web role, collection you can put it as a worker role. For example whatever you collect you want to turn it into process, put it into storage that you want to do as a worker role. You can do any configuration of this. So and each of these are independent of each other state wise and otherwise. So uh, that we said. Now we want to create or deploy an application. So first we can go and say create a new service and you can go and say uh, I want to create a service in whatever account that I have. Just want to give it a, a service name. This is a unique <coughs> URL which you need to give it. This is when you're creating a service. So you can go and give it a unique name saying as a sample. If it is already taken, it will flag you, otherwise you can go. Now, the Windows Azure, again, as the title also said, scalability is something really uh, important, right? In fact, that's one major advantage of the cloud, which is to say you can deploy it in multiple regions. You have data centers of Windows Azure across uh, geographies. Uh, and as you say, currently you have it in all these regions. Closest to India is probably Singapore, Hong Kong, etc. So you can go and choose. Also, apart from this, you have CDNs, which has also is a separate thing which you can subscribe. So basically, if you want something in India, something in Mumbai, for Pune, you can try to go. 
Now once you do all of that, you can say either you can deploy it directly, you can deploy. When I say deploy, this is why I was showing the whole screen because you need to give two, basically two XML kind of files. One is a package tarred file, the other is a real XML file. One file is called the configuration file. It's just a configuration file to say, hey, I want 10 instances to be deployed. I can change it without redeployment. 10 becomes 100 tomorrow. I just have to change the configuration file. The other file is your package file, which will be, for example, the application that you create or not, will be packaged by the Windows Azure component. That is why you install the Windows Azure SDK, because that will give you the SDK for you to package your load application into the form that you can directly go and upload, right? So if you upload these two and say okay, you will go and you will provision it. Five minutes is all I have. So, uh, uh, so that's about it. Yeah, I think the queue. There wouldn't be much queue. Everything would be. Hard question on the load on the queue. There are a lot of NP modules that use native bindings. Like GeoIP module is there, and uh, High Redis for Redis is there. So for those modules, I mean they don't compile on Node NPM yet. I mean, they don't compile on Windows yet. So is Microsoft also trying to do something with the the popular modules at least? Is there an initiative like they work for Node? Yeah, I'm not sure, but uh, uh, yeah, there is a there is a team within Microsoft who is working on porting, uh, but I don't know which package they're working on. You know what's going to come out, the roadmap, and so on. But there is uh, they are helping out. There was a node. There was a lot of uh, a load, node and maybe even there was a lot of initiative from Microsoft. Yes, yes. Yeah, it's like, it's like active development is there. In fact, all of these are open source. IIS node, Azure SDK, and they are hosted on GitHub. You can actually look at the source code as well. Do you want to know? There is no tree file. Sorry. There is a tree file. Oh, for Azure. Windows Azure.com. Tree file top right. But you need to give in your credit card and today, but you won't be charged on your credit card. It's easy to micro instance, you'll have to get credit card. But you won't get charged. But you won't be charged for 30 days. Yeah, you won't. And no spending limits. So, for example, for 30 days, if you leave your instance by mistake on. Previously, in fact, before last December 12th or 13th, before the announcement came, they said 30 days of so many hours available. So, by mistake, you forget to switch off your instance. For example, as you see on the portal, these instances are in the running state, right? It says ready. Right? I can uh, go ahead and say delete, stop, etc. So if you forget to do that, that means a virtual machine is being provisioned for it. So uh, if you do that, then you were charged if you exceed that limit. But now non spreading limits for 30 days is available. You have to give your credit card. Uh, so, so let me quickly show you the folder structure of a application. That, uh, for example, see, uh, here's the demo. So here's the, for example, there is an application which has a web role and the worker role, right? I said web is something on uh, IS and not on IS. So if you see, there are two, one is, so the application is like this. You want to track some stock codes of some three, four things, Microsoft, Apple, Google, uh, Intel, etc. And just, uh, just jan randomly generating a number creates the code. And what and this is done as a worker or a background process. This code, the background process uses the Windows Azure table storage to put that data on the table. The web front end checks for the last 10 seconds what is data has come on the table and displays the data. Just see this run and then I will uh, <coughs> probably so go to that. Or, okay, what? .NET web application or this is the node Azure SDK. Yeah. So as I told you, as we said, hey, we can write something like new Azure node app, you'll get the folder structure. Then you say, hey, create a node web role, you'll get a web role. Hey, create a node worker role, you'll get a web role. Now you can say NPM manager to install an express if you want, or whatever other packages that you want. So here you see this, for example, when I ran this command, which was say, start Azure emulator launch. The Windows Azure SDK comes with a local emulator or the simulator of the cloud. So the simulator of the cloud looks something like this. So we can open it and take a look at this. And uh, this simulator will try to just simulate if you deploy to the real cloud, how is it on your desktop, right? So here we have gone ahead and deployed this service here. Just hold on. 
and you get some this this is the output that is being generated in fact if you see that it will keep on generating some new thing every for 10 seconds so this is coming from the azure tables now how do you even understand what is happening or where is the azure tables for example so uh, you can there are various ways to look at the azure tables the easiest is through visual studio otherwise you build your own uh, I said it's uh, REST enabled, so you build your viewer for it. But here, just going and taking, there is a table. We created a table called quotes, and on the quotes, we can go and take a look at the table. In fact, we can go and uh, see that it has a lot of data into this table. How is this data being fed? You can go probably <coughs> and uh, see this. So there's something called get quotes. If you open up the get quotes, see what is there inside it. It just has a server.js and it has node.exe, which means that this is a worker role. All it does is this node.exe executes the service of the, uh, this. And you can set certain configurations on app.config. For example, I want to connect to this storage, etc. So if you open up this server.js, say, and see what it looks like. Uh, you see that uh, extremely uh, simple <laughs> so that's about it in fact there is an azure table so you have a handle to the table you can say okay these are the table operations you can do you can insert things now this keeps inserting rows into the table uh, at a specified time interval which is also specified there and uh, yeah, and then there's the other thing which is the web role which we set. So if you go to the show quotes here, the web role will go ahead and uh, if you see the web role, it's a little interesting to take a look at how this is organized. You have the web.config and you also have the modules where we can include whatever modules we want. And if you see, you have the IS node here. Point to note is this IS node is installed to the real window session when you deploy it. Because, for example, when you are creating a virtual machine, you will need to give the virtual machine node.exe and is node, right? Because it's not going to have any contact. So, you are packaging that also and then uploading that on the cloud. So, uh, all of these, I will just close with... Why can't this be part of the base itself? Like the Windows Azure VMs are Windows Server 2008 R2 with .NET 4.2 and IS 7.5. That configuration is there on the VM. So when you want to have node instances, don't they have node also? Why do you need to ship your own node? Do you Not ship, you go and upload. So as of today, the cloud is structured such that these are the only components. Anything outside of that third party DLS, anything so no that is not in the image. Not, it's DLS. not already there in the image. Understand, understand. I thought maybe you were just getting it so it's trying to pass out. It's only dotted. No, but it's, a, it's actually seamless to you, right? At the end of the day, you just have to, even creating something called a startup task for you to save while you're booting the VM, do the silent this silent installation at the take, startup. You can take care of the versioning of Node also, right? Because the versioning and testing again gets checked. You don't have to wait for a Azure release. Correct, correct. So here are the resources. And uh, we'll close with that. So the online portal windows.azure.com. The main site is windowsazure.com. You could go to bit.ly, Node.js download. That's pretty much uh, all the Node.js downloads for Azure. And uh, the web platform installer, Microsoft. So thank you.